Ja, dann geht's los. Dear Stefan, uh, you're co-coordinator of the Unity Project, um, one of the largest tinnitus research projects in uh, Europe. How long has the project um, been running and what it is all about? So the project actually started uh, already last year, at the beginning of last year. And Unity stands for the Unification of Treatments and Interventions for Tinnitus Patients. And it is a Europe-wide uh, consortium or connection of several researchers in the field of tinnitus with completely different um, profess professions or backgrounds. For example, we have ENT doctors, we have psychiatrists, psychologists, biologists, as well as um, programmers and, and data analysts. And all those people are part of the Unity Consortium. And the main aim of our project is the, um, the, the creation of a so-called um, decision support system, so a predictive computer model, which has the aim to answer the question, which um, treatment option is the best uh, treatment for a specific tinnitus um, mm -hmm. patient. And it's more or less in the sense of personalized treatment or a personalized or personalized medicine. And this model uses several different kinds of data, like demographic data with age and gender, psychological data, audiological, and also genetic data. And of course, such a, a big pro project like the Unity project also has not those main aims, but also some um, other smaller aims, like we have the development of specific smartphone apps, which we use for, for the interventions we have, and also the, the creation of a database and also genetic analysis. And one core aspect of the whole project is the, the conduction of an international multicenter randomized clinical trial, where we use uh, several tinnitus interventions, several treatments, not only as Uh, single therapies, but also as um, combinational therapies. And mm -hmm. the aim is also to, to validate um, the built uh, decision support system with the data we, we get from the, the randomized clinical trial. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the core aim of the Unity project. Yeah, great. What exactly is your job in the project? So my job is I'm the scientific co-coordinator of the whole project, which means I have to uh, create reports, ask people in the work groups to send reports, also milestones to have a um, specific eye on the timetable, of course, um, enable connection and networking between the uh, several different working groups we have at the project and also give support and do some problem solving if something appears or pops up in specific working groups. So yes, and another core um another um task of myself is i'm also responsible or i'm also um, the co coordinator of the uh, clinical trials i'm also responsible for the conduction of the the, the trial we have in unity mm -hmm. okay uh, we now learned that uh, you're looking for individual treatment approaches for tinnitus sufferers um, but yeah. how do you know that uh, tinnitus is um, such a heterogeneous uh, phenomenon? So there are several different uh, scientific um, works uh, regarding this topic, and mm -hmm. they were able to identify several different phenotypes so, uh, and also etiologies, so the causes for tinnitus, and all those things together make tinnitus a very complex phenomenon and also, mm -hmm. of course, a very heterogeneous condition. and. I think this is the reason why, of course, or of course, this is the reason why there's up to now no general or overall treatment um, for tinnitus. Mm. And but actually, there are some uh, subtypes of tinnitus patients which respond to a specific kind of treatments. And during Unity, we want to identify those patients and see what kind of characteristics they have, and also to which kind of interventions they respond. So I think um, precision medicine is the term we're searching for here. Mm -hmm. um, such a research project like the Unity project um, surely needs a lot of data. Uh, where do you get them from? So actually, we already have a lot of data from previous uh, studies we conducted in Germany. And over the course of the Unity project, um, the data will be analyzed from a specific data analysis teams. But on the other hand, of course, we're 
collecting uh, new data over the course of the, the clinical trial we're conducting. And yeah, the trial will be uh, conducted in five different clinical centers across the EU. So four different countries are part of it. We have here us in Germany, we have Belgium, we have uh, Greece, and we also have Spain. And mm -hmm. the aim is to recruit and investigate and also treat uh, 500 uh, tinnitus patients in total. And the great thing or the novel thing here is that um, all interventions and all assessments and questionnaires and so on we have during the project are harmonized over all the different centers. So everybody's doing the same. <laughs> so and I think that's the unique uh, part about Unity um, because according to my knowledge, no uh, project in other project in Tinnitus um, did this in such a, with such big um, data and such a, so many centers involved. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's have a look at the um, treatment methods um, that are being examined. Um, it's, um, I think, counseling, acoustic therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, and hearing aid. Is that right? Yeah, ex yeah exactly. So we have four different kinds of treatments. As you said, hearing aid specific, um, cognitive behavioral therapy uh, for tinnitus, as well mm -hmm. as our sound therapy or acoustic uh, stimulation mm -hmm. and structured counseling. And Structured counseling and acoustic stimulation will be conducted by a specific um, developed mobile application. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, the novel thing here is that we are not only applying those interventions as single therapies, but also as combination of therapies. Oh, and okay. the aim for this is to not only target one specific um, system, for example, only the auditory system, only the central nervous, nervous system, mm -hmm. but with a um, combination of those therapies, we can target those um, different um, systems together and maybe this increases um, the treatment effects we have, or maybe we have more responders with uh, such yeah. combinational therapies. And okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm doing some work in um, um, self-help groups, um, self-supporting groups uh, for tinnitus, and I learned that many yeah. sufferers also use um, other things like acupuncture, tailor-made yeah. notched music yeah. for tinnitus treatment, uh, yeah. to name um, just a few of these methods. Um, individually, they have also success with these um, treatments. Um, yeah. Are they also part of your investigation? So, for example, the concept of mindfulness is also part of our specific um, CBT oh. program in Unity and also for the sound therapy we're using and uh, the approach, uh, the, the tailor-made notched music approach, where we filter um, the tinnitus frequency out of the signal, for example, sounds or, or music. But as you already said, there are a lot of uh, different treatment approaches in tinnitus. We have neuromodulation, for example, medical therapies, and also cochlear implants. And we decided to use the um, guidelines, um, the European guidelines from 2019, um, to orient us and define which interventions we want to use. And for example, um, these guidelines um, give specific recommendations for the, it's of course research-based, um, mm -hmm. uh, specific recommendations for the use of cognitive behavioral therapy for tinnitus. And that's why we, for example, chose this one. Okay. What is the current status of the project? What are you um, actually doing? So actually more than half of the project is already ah, <laughs> over okay. now. And currently the first analysis has started that we have first scientific uh, publications and mm -hmm. we're also getting more concrete about which um, specific analysis we want to conduct with the data from the RCT. And in general, I can say we very good in time and of course this is only possible with a very or highly motivated people which mm. are part of the consortium okay are there already uh, patients in the clinical study how many uh, do you have inside there and um, is there any feedback available so the study is actually ongoing in all clinical centers so in all of our five centers and mm. already approximately 300 patients Mm -hmm. were included in the trial and approximately 100 of them already uh, successfully completed the 12 weeks um, treatment phase. But yeah. uh, results, I cannot talk about results because the plan is 
the specific data analysis will start when the RCT is over mm -hmm. and when the database is closed and this will be by the end of next year and then the specific analysis will start and I think we can expect the first results um, spring or early 2023 for uh -huh. example or something like that. Okay. Well, I learned you are planning to build a computer model to predict uh, possible individual uh, tinnitus therapy. Yep. Um, well, those affected um, are, of course, interested. To when will it be uh, available? How can it be used? Since the, the plan is to validate this this uh, created uh, predictive computer model or decision support system with the data from the clinical trial, this might take a while since the, um, the RCT runs till um, the end of next year. And yeah. so mm -hmm. the actual aim of, of the system is to support um, the clinicians at the clinics mm -hmm. uh, in their decision, which treatment is appropriate for the, the specific um, kind of tinnitus patient. Okay. What role uh, will apps play in this? Uh, will the model um, will also be available on uh, mobile devices for individual use? So this is a very important and very interesting uh, question, of course. Maybe there's the opportunity to um, to publish this or, or to create some sort of mobile application for patient use with mm -hmm. the decision support system. But of course, first we have to wait till the model is built. We have to validate it. It needs to mm -hmm. be approved in the daily clinical routine. And then we can think about um, creating some sort of mobile application, but I'm afraid that this will only be something like a limited or reduced um, reduced variant of the, the decision system we're planning because we need some specific data about audiological factors, also um, genetic material, for example, and also um, brain stem responses or so electrophysiological measurements because those are important parts of the decision support system but it's a very interesting point of course because everything mm -hmm. is mobile in, or many um, um, parts of the unity uh, project are mobile i think we should definitely think about it and mm -hmm. when the time is there publish an, an app with a um, limited decision support system mm -hmm. something like that Okay, would the, the model also provide emergency measures um, in case um, of critical comorbidities um, in decompensated uh, patients with tinnitus? Yeah. So actually, there are no plans up to now to include something like this because the original purpose is to use it uh, in the clinics and help yeah. the, the medical doctors or the psychologists in mm -hmm. their decision for the right treatment. So up to now, there's nothing integrated. And maybe when we, we get more concrete with something like a mobile application of this system, I think such um, emergency plans or options for people with specific comorbidities, decompensate tinnitus, as you said, should be part of, of such an application, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Sounds great. Well, good luck for the second half of the Unity uh, project. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, Stefan, thank you very much for the interview. <laughs>